What's up everyone? If you've watched my channel before, then you know that I am a huge fan of the Affinity Creative Suite. That's Affinity Publisher, Affinity Designer, and Affinity Photo. If you haven't watched my videos before, welcome. Do take a moment to subscribe so that you can see all of my videos. But today I'm going to talk to you about some features that I think are missing from Affinity, and specifically features that are missing from Affinity Designer that exist in Adobe Illustrator. Affinity Designer and Adobe Illustrator are both vector graphics editors, and so they really compete directly with each other, and there are some features in Illustrator that I really wish would come to Affinity Designer. Specifically, I've got five features that I'm going to talk about today. First up is the Shape Builder tool. Now, if you've worked with Illustrator, you know why I'm talking about when I talk about the Shape Builder tool. It's one of the best tools that Adobe has ever made, and it allows you to perform a variety of path operations straight from this tool. It allows you to delete parts of shapes and combine parts of shapes, and it does so in a very fluid way. Now, almost every design program out there has some kind of pathfinder operations. So they might call them Pathfinder, in Affinity they call them Geometry, and these allow you to do a lot of the same things as the Shape Builder tool does, but not in as fluid a way. I know that it would really make my workflow easier, especially when I'm doing icon design or logo design, if Affinity could bring something like the Shape Builder tool to Affinity Designer. And I know from the comments on my videos that a lot of people feel the same way. Next up is Live Trace. Now Live Trace is a really important feature in Illustrator for a lot of people. And that's why I brought it up here. It's not an important part of my workflow because I don't sketch and then scan my artwork in to try and bring them into a theme designer in any way. I just sketch and then I just reference those sketches as I do the design. But for a lot of people, not having Live Trace has been a deal breaker. Live Trace is when you bring in a bitmap image and then Illustrator will trace it and try and create paths out of what it sees there. And you can set up different things to have more or less vector points and more or less color. There's a lot of options within Live Trace and it's become an integral part of a lot of people's workflow. There are ways around this. So for example, Jay Christina, who's another YouTuber here, he uses Inkscape to do a Live Trace and then he exports that as an SVG and brings it into Affinity Designer, and that's how he goes about it. But it really would be nice for a lot of people if Affinity would just bring a live trace feature to Affinity Designer. Now, I'm sure that takes a lot of work and development, so I'm not saying it should be here right now, but I do hope that that feature is coming. Third, I want to talk about the graphing tool. So Adobe Illustrator has a graphing tool where you can actually bring in spreadsheet data and then create graphs off of it. And I don't know if a lot of people know about this, but for those of us who design infographics, it's definitely an important part of our workflow. And Affinity Designer doesn't have anything like that. Now, to be perfectly fair, the graphing tool in Adobe Illustrator is not great. It seems like it hasn't been updated in a long time. It's kind of clunky to use. You have to know a lot of tricks to make it work the way you want it to, but at least it's there. And in Affinity Designer, we don't have anything like that. And I would love the graphing tool to come to Affinity Designer because right now to create graphs or charts in Affinity Designer takes a lot more work on my end. It takes a lot more math, figuring out how to do the shapes just right. And with a graphing tool, that would just be automatic. So I do hope that a graphing tool is in the works for Affinity Designer. Fourth is the gradient mesh. So the gradient mesh and its newer form, the free flow gradient in Illustrator, those are ways by which you can make a gradient that is not linear or radial, but you can just mesh across the entire object. And you can add in as many points of color as you want. And then those colors will be blended together into a gradient. And it's a super useful tool. I don't use it a ton, but the times when I would like to be able to use it, I do miss it in Designer. There are just times when I would like to be able to do something as a mesh gradient, and I'm not able to. And then sometimes there's no other way for me to get that look. Affinity has a great gradient tool, but it only works with standard gradients like linear and elliptical. So I do hope that soon we will see some type of a gradient mesh feature come to Affinity Designer. The fifth and final thing that I hope will come to Affinity Designer is a recolor artwork tool. In Illustrator, the recolor artwork tool allows you to see all of the colors in a list that are in your artwork and then choose different colors to slot in over them. It's great if you need to rebrand a piece of artwork if the color palette just didn't work out for you or for the client and you just want to make changes across the entire document. It's a great way to do that and it saves a lot of time. Affinity doesn't have anything like that. The only thing that people can do in Affinity is use global colors. And if you use global colors, then you can go adjust each swatch and that will change it across the document. I don't really like that because it makes you adjust each swatch. It's not as easy to go back and forth and try out different things. And it requires you to set up global colors from the very beginning of your design. 
which is probably what you should be doing anyway, but not everyone remembers to do that every time. And so I do hope that some type of recolor artwork will come in. Even if we could just get the option to select all of one color, that would even make it easier because we could then just change the fill on all of those at the same time. But currently we don't have anything like that. Recolor artwork is another one of those features that I don't use all the time. It's not a constant annoyance to me, but when I do need it, it would really save me a lot of time if I had it. So there you have it. Those are the five things that I hope will come to Affinity Designer that are already in Adobe Illustrator. Now this doesn't mean that I don't like Affinity Designer. I love Affinity Designer and I still think it's the best graphics editor out there. I think it's better than Illustrator in many ways and it's definitely more affordable than Illustrator with the one time purchase price of just $50 and then you own it forever. You don't have to subscribe and keep paying over and over again the way you do with Illustrator. So I still love Affinity Designer and remember I do have courses on Affinity Designer that I'll link to in the description of this video so please check those out if you want to learn Affinity Designer. And remember Affinity Designer is available on iPad and Illustrator's not. Even though Adobe has promised that Illustrator's coming to the iPad, it's still not there. And if it's anything like Photoshop coming to the iPad, it won't be able to do even half of what Affinity Designer can already do on the iPad. So I have courses on the iPad version as well, so be sure to check those out. Now it's your turn. Let me know if you agree with my list here or if there's other features that you wish would come to Affinity Designer that you were used to using in Illustrator. Also, let me know what things do you think are better about Affinity Designer. We'll chat in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.